I'm Moody Boo and I'm back with part two of Atelier Cologne House Review. Now these are still ones I think are appropriate for spring and summer. Um, the last part that I'll do are more I think geared for cooler temperatures but hey do what you want to do. If you want to wear them in hot weather I say do it. So the first one I'll talk about is Oolong Infini. I have a decant of. But I'm also going to talk about Vini Incensi or Incense and Ombre New. And then I'll talk about my larger bottles, my Palmelo Paradise, which is a 100 ml, and my Orange Sanguine, which is a 200 ml. I had a, a 30 ml bottle of Orange Sanguine that I recently finished, so I'll be breaking into my monster bottle here soon. I might just fill that other bottle though. That would make more sense because it's more convenient. I like carrying that one around. Even though it doesn't really need spritzing, re-spritzing very often, I still like carrying it around, having a little decant of it, you know. Okay, so I'm going to start with Oolong Infini. Now I have some on my hand here, but I'm going to give it another toot. Ooh. I forgot how good of a sprayer that one is. This is a true tea fragrance, just a tea freshy kind of a perfume. Wonderful for spring and summer. Um, I've mentioned before in other videos, I've just recently been getting into the note of tea. I haven't been into it ever, ever. It's always been a little too tame for me. I was really into the ouds and the ambers and the heavy gourmands and and animalics and so I, I kind of skipped over some of the lighter more um, refreshing notes and I'm just getting into appreciating them like lime. Lime is one of my favorite notes in perfume completely and totally. I love it and I never even thought about it five years ago so now I love it and well I started loving it like back five years ago but tea is like just in the last year, not even last year, probably less than that. And this is a good one. So it's tea and bergamot and there's neroli and some white florals, some Gaiac, some vetiver, a little bit of leather. I don't really get that. By the time it gets to the deep dry down, it's become a skin scent. I'm glad I have this in decant, but I only have it in a decant. So when this runs out, I'll probably get another one. There's no point, in my opinion, having a big bottle of a perfume that I have to reapply often. Might as well have a bunch of decants. That way I can just throw the next one in my purse and go. Don't need to worry about it. It takes less space. Now, if it's a Holy Grail, Desert Island, Unicorn, one of those perfumes that I have to have, then I will absolutely get a full bottle every time. I don't care if I have any plans of ever touching it again, but I have to have the full bottle. With perfumes like this, especially freshies, um, that I know I gotta reapply a whole bunch, nah, I don't worry about it, decants are fine. And this is really pretty. It's not sweet, really, it's a little sweet, but it's mostly citrusy, um, tea and it's very light um, and that's another reason I'll probably won't get a big bottle is because I like a decent performer. Freshies can perform pretty good too. This one doesn't last but two three hours on me so yep it's very nice though very nice especially if you like tea. Next! So another one I have gone through a small bottle of this already is Vinian Sensei and I kind of grew out of it um, I got tired of it after going through that bottle. I went ahead and replaced that bottle, but I haven't, you can tell, I haven't touched it much since then because I kind of just kind of, I don't know, I got tired of it. Like I said, it's like listening to the same performer too much or um, eating the same foods. It's really nice. It's a beautiful vanilla, but... I don't know. It's just not my favorite vanilla. If I'm going to grab a vanilla, I usually reach for something else. So it's just vanilla and there's some woody notes and some citrus and vetiver and amber and there's some um, coriander and oak moss and it's very nice. 
but I get tired of it very quickly. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. It's not a heavy gourmand kind of a vanilla, and that's fine. But I feel like the florals are almost in competition with the vanilla in this one. So I just feel like it's a little, it puts me a little off balance, but I still really like it. I really like it. I think it's a beautiful vanilla, but again, I got tired of it, probably because of the whole off balance thing. So I get vertigo easy, you know. So next one. Oh, performance on this one though is really good. It's really good, way better than Oolong and Finney. This one is, is easily eight hours probably. This one I would not wear during a hot day. I would save it specifically for springtime or summer nights. So, all right, next up. The next one though is like a rediscovery. And this one I also have repurchased because I've gone through a bottle of it. I thought I was tired of it because I didn't reach for it again, but I never remember getting tired of it like I did Vinny and Sensei. I just stopped reaching for it once I replaced that bottle. Weird, I know, it's a weird thing, it's another one. But <clears throat> this is Amber New. This is so good, it's so good. I have some on my hand here, I'm gonna put some more on. It's a good sprayer too. And it starts off with this beautiful citrus orange kind of a blast. But that doesn't last very long because a bunch of the, the warmer notes start adding to it and start bringing it out of the stratosphere and grounding it back to the planet Earth. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So this is just orange and labdanum and benzoin and tonka and orchids and cinnamon and there's some tajit and patchouli and some citrus in there. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, it is one of those that when you first spray it, it's too much for hot weather. You need to let it chill out for a little bit before you go out in warmer weather, but you can wear it. In warmer weather I think because of the laptinum the orange and the benzoin it will allow that to happen but at the very beginning there's a lot of heavy thick sweetness to it a lot like Vinny and Sensei and in fact in on Amber New my favorite part of it is the deep dry down where the patchouli and a little bit of spice and tonka comes out, and I guess a little bit of orchid too, because um, there's florals in there. I, I can't really tell you it's an orchid, but I do get a hint of florals. And it's just, it almost has this, this freshness to it. It's, it's almost if the patchouli um, had sex with a little mint plant and their baby was put in this perfume because it's got that that refreshing almost iciness to it um, for part of the the wearing oh i just i really appreciate this one much more well balanced i think than vinnie and sensei that's just my opinion but and this one performs really well but again i think this is one you can wear year round you just have to be careful of real hot weather very unisex. All of these are very unisex. So that's on Bernou. All right, now to the big bottles. The next one is Palmelo Paradis. And you can tell I have not worn this very much. I did not go through a small bottle of this one. I actually blind bought this one for a super good price. And I'm very glad I did. I don't reach for it often, but I do on occasion. So this is just pink grapefruit and mandarin and orange blossom and mint and black currant and vetiver and there's some amber and rose and iris. And it sounds like it would be sweeter than what it is, but it's not real sweet. Oh, in the beginning is the sweetest part and that's actually my favorite part of it. Because of those citruses and the orange blossom and the black currant and the mint, it gives it this beautiful, sweet, but not real sweet, 
um, citrusy, fresh, um, almost cool kind of a, a blast. And then the vetiver and the amber and the florals come in. And I guess the black currant is in there the whole time. I don't know. I don't really pick it out. But there is a juiciness to it. I could see would probably be from a juicy black currant note. But once the vetiver and the amber and the florals come in, I don't, the florals aren't real sweet in my opinion. I don't think the rose is a sweet rose. I don't get really rose, but I do get the iris. It does dry it up and um, make it a little bit powdery in the dry down, which is kind of a, a weird dichotomy of having this slightly sweet, fresh, light-hearted, um, minty, orange blossom, juicy kind of a, a perfume. And then that iris brings a powdery note to it and a dryness that it, it does kind of push and pull at the same time because of that for me in the dry down. So I like it, but I don't reach for it often because my favorite part is the top, is the, the, the first 30 minutes of it. That's absolutely my favorite because it smells like sweet orange juice. It's, it's just delightful. It's delightful for the first 30 minutes. And then it kind of goes a little, personality, disassociation, disorder, direction, you know, but gosh, that beginning is gorge. And performance on this is fair. It's about six hours, five, six hours, um, very unisex, absolutely spring, summer perfume. I wouldn't even look at this during the cooler months. I, why would you, unless you need that kind of uplifting, you know, sometimes I wear a summer fragrance um, in the winter time to kind of uplift me when I'm feeling getting the winter blues. But this wouldn't be one that I would reach for. I would go for a, a Coney Island or something like that. Something that really makes me feel like spring and summer. Not something that's like, meh, except for that top. That top is gorge. All right, last up. The last one cannot be denied. It is one of the best citrus perfumes out there and that's orange sanguine and I have gone through a small bottle a 30 ml bottle of this or did I go through two anyway so this is one of the best so this is blood orange and bitter orange and geranium and there's some white florals and some sandalwood and some amber and some tonka which makes it sound like it's super gourmand but it isn't in my opinion it's this beautiful, not super sweet, um, gorgeous, juicy, orange perfume. Anyway, in the dry down, the amber and the sandalwood and the tonka come out a little more. I, tonka, not as much. I don't really get that because tonka adds this, like what dates add to a, a perfume, in my opinion. It's this, almost this chewy sweetness, gourmand kind of a, a a feel to them and I don't get that with this. I do get the amber and the sandalwood for sure in the dry down. It just because at the beginning I think it's so so juicy and moist that once it dries down that the amber and the sandalwood help dry it up a little bit and just and honestly I didn't appreciate this one very much when I first had that first 30 ml bottle because I was like oh, Nothing real complicated about it, but sometimes the best things are the most simple. I mean, look at me and Hilde Soliani. I've been having a love affair with her perfumes for how many years now? And they are pretty simple, but I'm very loyal. <laughs> and this stuff performs really well for a citrus orange perfume. And this is another one of those mindless perfumes. A lot of Atelier Cologne's perfumes are very mindless, meaning... They're great for lazy people like me when I'm in a hurry and I don't want to stand over my collection and make a decision, you know, categorize down, okay, what do I want to wear, a gourmand, a woody, and a, if I just want to grab something and go, this is one of those that I do in the, the spring and summer. It's so good. So good. All right. Well, that's about it for me. 
And um, that was part two of Atelier Cologne. And I have a part three coming. I'll probably wait to post it. Well, I haven't even recorded it until closer to the cooler months, you know, because it would be more appropriate for that. But who knows? I mean, you know, who knows? I'll, I'll get it posted soon. All right. All right, everybody. Stay safe. Use your own nose. And I'll see you soon. Peace.